Seth, we all know that the early universe was really very simple. It's kind of a homogenous, very hot, very dense, very energetic thing. And from that, we have this enormous complexity of, of, of galaxies and stars and planets and people and machines and all sorts of stuff arising from that simplicity. So complexity is really important to understand. A lot of people have theories. You've talked about that a computational universe necessarily engenders complexity. That to me is a remarkable statement. Necessarily? Sure. It's a mathematical theorem. Necessarily does. So, and, but of course, it is mysterious, right? It's very mysterious why the universe could start out to be so simple. Simple laws of physics. Only a few bits of information and in all the laws of physics fit on the back of a t-shirt. The initial state of the universe, very simple to describe, only a very few bits of information, maybe no bits of information, right? And then everything is simple, simple laws, simple initial conditions, things evolve for a few billion years, and pooey, you know, <laughs> what the heck happened, right? That's amazing. And indeed, you know, human beings have spent a lot of their history trying to provide explanations for why this complexity sure. exists and how it arose. Yeah, so I claim that, that um, you can actually understand this pretty straightforward fashion. And the, the secret to why complexity arises comes from the fact that at bottom the universe is computing. All right, I want to get into this in detail, but at first I want to understand what you're really saying. That you are really saying that things like uh, uh, that life itself, it, it was actually necessary, that, 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 that was a... Uh, uh, it was built into the laws that created complexity? Well, uh, your DNA and my DNA couldn't have been built into that initial moment, Robert, because there wasn't enough information around. You know, right. we each have, have tens of billions of bits right. in our DNA, right? It's a pretty big molecule. And there just wasn't tens of billions of bits around at the beginning of the universe. So the information that makes you and me was not built in at the beginning. What's built into the universe is, if you like, the capacity to produce complex things somewhere down the road. It's that ability that's there. So is it, is it the possibility of, of producing that, or the, is, that, is, is the possibility the thing that is necessary, or is, the, or is some kind of complex result that which is necessary? Or is the necessity the thing that's possible? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, really, it's, really, it's really important because it, 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 it deals with, with what reality is all about. Is there, is there a, a uh, based on the laws of physics and, and, and a computational universe as you see it, you know, is, there a, is there a line that, or you know, however generous the possibility of, of, of uh, probabilities are, is there a general line that has to be followed? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't, you know, this line doesn't necessarily end up with life, but it's going to generate with something complex, something okay. as complex as life. So the fact okay. that we actually get the life that we have, sure. right, that, that isn't built in from the beginning, right. just the way our own DNA isn't built in from the beginning. But something very complex is. Actually, what's at the beginning is simple. This is a, this is the, there's, you know, complexity is not like energy, right? right. First law of thermodynamics says energy is conserved. Right. All right? Okay. And uh, uh, complexity is not like that. Things can start off simple and then become complex. Okay. So we you want know? to understand how that happens in a computational universe. Right. So, so first of all, why do I say the universe is computing? Well, this actually may sound like some radical notion, but in fact, it's been known and uh, for more than 100 years. Back at the end of the 19th century, people like James Clerk Maxwell, like, like Josiah Willard Gibbs, like Ludwig Boltzmann, were trying to understand what happened at the level of atoms and molecules. What was this quantity they called entropy? Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. Entropy, at that point, was known as some funky quantity. Who knows what it was? It gummed up the works of heat engines, <laughs> prevented them from doing as much work as you'd like. And what they figured out was, was that entropy was information that effectively it's bits. Entropy is bits. Bits of information that are registered by, you know, where atoms are. You know, atom over here, that's zero. Atom over here, that's one. Right? Atom goes from here to there, bit flips. Mm -hmm. They discovered this in the 19th century. And in fact, whenever two atoms bounce off of each other, whatever mm -hmm. bits they're carrying get flipped as well. So the information gets transformed in process. Mm -hmm. That's what 
Boltzmann's equation describes. How does entropy, information, get processed when atoms collide? Mm. So, in fact, this notion that the universe is computing is a very old one. At bottom, the universe is processing information. Okay. All I'm doing is exploring the implications of that. Okay. So what are the implications? Well, now, actually, luckily, and more recently, we've developed a very good theory of what computers do and what they're capable of doing. And the answer that the, what they're capable of doing is basically anything mathematical that we can think of. Right? Anything based on the laws of mathematics, or for that matter, the laws of language, or for that matter, the laws of life, because as we know, life is digital, right? Mm -hmm. It's about mm -hmm. that digital information and DNA that gets expressed via pro RNA and then proteins. Life is a kind of a computation as well. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, <clears throat> so why is it that we get things like life from a very simple computation that's taking place at the level of elementary particles? Well, there's a simple reason for that too, which is that computations necessarily give rise to more complex computations. If I take something like, you know, just a bunch of elementary particles banging off of each other, as long as they're capable of what's called universal computation, which just means performing very simple logical operations, bit flips, etc. They are, and they are capable of doing universal right. computation. I know because I build quantum computers where we take elementary particles and have them compute. Right here. Right here, here they are. They're computing even as we speak. Right. So, so we know that at bottom, these elementary particles are capable of universal computation. Okay. Now program them at random. Just give them a random program. Random. Random. This is the key to this, right? We've got to have an account for where this information comes from. Where does that very special information in your DNA, that information that makes you, you, where does it come from? The answer is it comes from little quantum fluctuations, from quantum randomness. Like for, here's a good example of, of, of a bit, a quantum bit that gets injected in the universe at the very beginning. Why is our galaxy here rather than 100 million right. light years off in that direction? Right. Well, it's here because way back at the beginning of the universe, there was a little tiny, tiny, tiny quantum fluctuation that said the energy was just a little, little, little bit bitter, <laughs> he, bigger here than it was over there. Right. Well, and because gravity has this funny feature that, that if there's a little tiny bit extra energy, so it'll start to clump around. Give it enough time. Right. So it started to clump, then the energy density got bigger, got even clumpier, clumpier, right. the process accelerates pretty soon. You have a galaxy, the galaxy formed here and not there because there's this little quantum bit that got right. injected. Right, right. Right. So we're injecting randomness into the universe at all points. That's where all information comes from. Its origin is in these little quantum fluctuations. Okay, so, but, but that's randomness. That's not complexity. Randomness is just gobbledygook, you know, right. strings of, of zeros and ones. Right. So why does that necessarily produce complex behavior? Well, there's a, an old and wrong explanation of complexity that says it's just randomness, right? There's this famous image uh, uh, by Borel, the famous French mathematician, of monkeys typing into a typewriter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Imagine monkeys typing into a typewriter. Borel says, if you had a million monkeys, each typing 10 characters a second, then by next year they could have typed any one of the books in all the richest libraries <laughs> in the world. But then, of course, he goes on to say, but of course, the chances of them producing anything would be, you know, anything of, of note would be basically zero. Right. So small as to be minuscule. And in fact, uh, uh, for my book, Programming the Universe, I did a little, a little calculation imagining, suppose every elementary particle in the whole universe is a monkey. It's been <laughs> typing as fast as the laws of physics allow <laughs> since the beginning of time, 13.7 yeah, right, billion right, years right. ago, right? How much of Hamlet's soliloquy could be written up there in the cosmic black body radiation? If all the particles were typing as fast as the laws of physics will allow since the beginning of the universe, and the answer is? To be or not to be, that is the... That's about that's it. How they, well, they might get that is the question whether it is nobler <laughs> or mine, right? You know, so <clears throat> yeah, they'd only get about fifty letters in, hmm. and the reason is simple. You know, you type the first forty-nine letters, and then your chance of getting the next letter right is you know only one out of twenty-six, right? Well, one out of twenty-six to the power of fifty is a very, 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 very tiny number, right. and you know, only around ten to the ninety photons in the cosmic <laughs> black body radiation. You you do the math, that's what it comes out. So that's not the right explanation. It can't just be that randomness is just being injected and we just arrive at random. We would only get gobbledygook. Right. But now suppose that these monkeys, instead of typing into a typewriter, are typing into a computer. 
and that the computer is taking this gobbledygook, the monkeys type these random bits of information, and it interprets it. It interprets these bits as instructions. You know, do this, do that, yeah. do something else. Well, at first that might seem you know, garbage in, garbage out, right? The same situation. But in fact, it's not so. There is a beautiful and elegant branch of mathematics called algorithmic information theory, which is essentially the theory of what happens when monkeys type into computers, <laughs> right? What do you expect to get out? And the answer, perhaps surprisingly, is you expect to get out all sorts of interesting and complex things. Hmm. Now, why is that? It's because there are very simple, short, random-looking computer programs. And in fact, the shortest program to do something always looks random, because all hmm. the order has been sucked out of it, right? There's a short program that will cause a computer, say, to print out all the digits of pi. Or a program that will tell the computer, create chemistry and see what happens when you combine different molecules together. We know there's a short program for that because that program is essentially the laws of physics, and we know that right. those are very simple, right. right? And then there's another program that says, explore all possible computable mathematical structures in the world. Right. Those programs are short. And if you take a computer and you program it at random, you expect it to hit upon one of those programs here and there. So our universe is being programmed by these little quantum fluctuations. Bits are being injected. Different bits are being injected in different place, in places. And somewhere, someplace, sometime, you expect interesting stuff to start to happen. Indeed, if the universe is big enough, and it's pretty darn big, then you expect with certainty that someplace and sometime, interesting things will start to happen. Little combinations of chemicals will start reproducing themselves. Little you know, sets of self-reproducing chemicals will get will manage to put themselves inside a vesicle and become a simple cell. Cells will band together to form things like animals, right? Animals will start to have sex, right? And reproduce like mad, and eventually you have bunny rabbits and human beings, and then human beings will create computers and societies. Those kinds of things necessarily happen because the universe is computing.